I am a temple who walks the earth. My womb is fertile for giving birth. I am a woman planted in truth. I grow my branches from sacred roots. You are the form of who you want to be. So come untethered, your soul is free. We're here to heal, we're here to thrive. We are a dream who's come alive. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake. A revelation for God's sake. An evolution for God's sake. An inspiration for God's sake. 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 And so it is. Hello, Essence. Welcome to Wild Soul Medicine Radio. I'm Jody England, and I'm delighted to be back with you today for a behind-the-scenes conversation with my right-hand woman, Vivian Bross. Um, I'm going to introduce her before I <laughs> unmute her line and say hello. But uh, you've heard me reference Viv many times on the show. Viv started out as a, a student of this work. She came in as a client many years ago and has been, um, you know, she's been involved in all of the courses and has uh, really applied herself to the work in such a beautiful, consistent manner. And over that period, I've had the opportunity to uh, develop into deep friendship with her and really get to know her heart and her beauty. And uh, as that evolved, it became really clear a couple years ago that she was meant to be part of this work. And uh, so we both waited for the opportunity for how and when and where that would occur and setting those intentions and aligning our lives so that when the doors opened, we were ready. And uh, so in the fall, she actually uh, came into Untamed You as my business manager and confidant, and um, and she just continues to evolve at such a rapid pace. She's really, uh, truly one of the evolutionary velocity wind drinker uh, women that I love to hang around. And so... Um, she currently is also coaching our clients, and uh, because she's the only other person on the planet who knows the work that I do and does it the way that I do it, she uh, also coaches me. And um, so she has a lot of inside scoop as to um, you know what it's like to work with me and for me and um, what it's like to have traveled this path. And um, so it just felt like today would be a really cool backdoor view into what she might have to say about such things. And also, I'm opening myself to her interviewing me. So we're turning the tables on me a little as well to see um, what you all might like to know about uh, everything from the work that we do, the work that we're doing together, and also this new paradigm that we're putting together. Like how do we actually navigate the frontier of creating something completely new in business, uh, doing it from a feminine place, and um, how do we uh, figure out what those things are and how do we actually do that space? So um, Viv and I will be interviewing each other most of today, but uh, we also have a way that you can submit questions as you're listening if you would like us to ask each other um, a question, we're happy to do that for you as well. We don't have the ability to take callers uh, with the setup that we have, so we, I can't take Viv and take a caller, but um, we have a way that you can actually submit questions to us as well. So we'll let Viv fill you in on all of those logistics. <laughs> um, so without further ado, I would love for you to hear the beautiful voice 
of my right-hand woman, my confidant, my partner in crime, uh, Vivian Bross. Hello, Viv. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. That was quite an introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to play with the volume for a minute because your um, sound is a little funky now. Can you say something else? Uh, it's good to be here. There we go. Okay, it's settled down some. Beautiful. You just came in with such a burst of light. It blew things up for a minute. <laughs> it's so funny to be on this side of it because, um, you know, I always say to anyone who's going to be guesting or taking a call, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry. It's all going to be good. Don't be nervous. And it's so funny to be on this side going, hmm, what are we going to discuss? Sort <laughs> of um, <laughs> all up in the air and we'll see how that goes. Completely. And, you know, one of the things that's so great about Viv is uh, we're a great partnership because she really is such a cheerleader and she's very happy being in a support role. Um, when it comes to the business, you know, with, with she and I, and so this is completely her leaning into her edge of being out and about here on the front <laughs> of the scenes. Um, and that's what I love about her is she is a threshold walker. So even if she's uncomfortable, she's going to say yes to it so that she can see what the lesson is. So I love that about you. Thank you very much. I love the example you showed me. It was uh -huh. funny when you said wind drinkers because we've used that word and talked about it, but hearing it as um, a title, yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Like I absolutely want to be the wind drinker. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And you are. And you are. You know, and that's what's actually beautiful. I love that the, you know, sometimes when we say things like wind drinker and evolutionary velocity and when people see the website, right, there's a certain, sometimes people are automatically disqualifying themselves because they're thinking like, my power doesn't look like her power or, you know, I'm, I don't know that I'm moving as fast as she might be. And so I love this opportunity for our listeners to have another view of what it can look like, you know, to be on this path. We all do the path a different way. And, um, Viv and I are actually soulmates. We, maybe we'll talk about that at some point. But <laughs> we have these complementary um, strengths, you know. So mine is power and hers is heart. And so she comes at this from a much softer place, a much more loving, gentle, kind of motherly place. And I come at it uh, more from a warrior, like, let's get this done and let's conquer the thing. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm going to stop talking so much, but I'm, I really want you to have a chance to experience the beautiful um, space of Viv and who she is and what she looks like, because that's another window into I see you, I am you, I love you, right? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right, Mama. So are you up for a question? <laughs> it depends. Are you asking me first or am I asking you first? <laughs> How about if I ask you first? <laughs> depends. Is it a painful question or is it a painful question? <laughs> well, I'm sure it won't be painful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know I told Sally that. So <laughs> I know, right? Thank you for bringing that back up. I lied. I didn't lie. I just... Um, I saw the other side of what it could be. So, yes, I am ready for a question because I see the other side. Okay, beautiful. So I am feeling that it, it would serve for us to start at the beginning, right? Okay. To start at the beginning of you stepping into this work. So if you could just kind of settle into that feeling place of, if you remember, that very first conversation we had um, about you stepping into this work and as much as you would want to share about what was happening in your life, um, were you a wind drinker at that time? Um, what kind of concerns or fears did you have about coming in? And um, how did you ultimately decide to uh, that this was for you? Mm. Yeah, as soon as you said, can you remember that conversation? It was like I went right back uh, to exactly where I was when we were talking. So you had met one of um, now our mutual friends, but a friend of mine at the time years ago, and um, she called me and another one of my friends called me and they said, there's this woman, <laughs> you have to meet her. And when you meet her, you'll understand why you have to meet her. And of course I trust them, but I'm like, um, I don't know that I really need to meet anybody else. My life feels pretty crazy full right now. And 
uh, they had all signed up to do core event work. So they were agreeing to do this deep exploration into um, what is the story that happens in your childhood that shapes you know, the patterns that then play out over and over and over again in your life. And um, we were doing just, you know, discussion conversations with you just to meet you over the phone and see what it was about. And I remember exactly where I was and you called. It was about 9.30 at night. And that was the only time I could fit you into my schedule because, of course, I was very busy. And um, so that was the best time for us to talk. <laughs> so you <laughs> called and you were fully present. And you said, I see you and um, this will serve. And I and I want you to trust that this will serve, but it has to be your decision. And at the time, um, I was a year into my separation from my husband, and I could see the patterns that had been playing out. I could see how things weren't serving anymore, but I was struggling to figure out where to go with it. You know, I was looking at um, this future that felt a little uncertain, um, I knew where I was going to live. I was moving back in, into the house that we had shared. Um, I knew my time with my children was going to look a lot different, and I didn't quite know how that would feel. Um, it felt like a huge loss. Um, <laughs> there was the whole failure piece of um, I showed up in my marriage. I felt like I had done it the way you're supposed to do it. Um, I'd opened my heart. I'd loved. I'd tried. I'd, you know done everything the way you're supposed to, and it still hadn't turned out um, the way the fairy books tell you, <laughs> the way that I'd seen it modeled in my family. You know, I felt like I was failing so much of that. Um, and you called and you said, there's a way, there's a path, there's something that can shift, but you have to be willing to take the step. Um, and I had no idea what you were describing. I just knew I can't continue the pattern. Um, and be the mom, the wife, the mother, the daughter, the friend, the woman that um, I know is inside of me. You know, it was like this um, piece of me that had been hiding for a long time, that had been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking because I couldn't express it, just knew it had to come out. And so that's how we started our work together. Um, it was a group event, so it was, uh, I think there were four of us, five of us, that did this together, so my closest girlfriends, and we all looked at our core wounding together, and um, that was how the journey began. So do you remember, this is a follow-up question, this yeah. doesn't count as one of my three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the agreement. <laughs> Do you remember a moment in that conversation where you went from, um, okay, I'm going to show up here because my friends say I should show up here to the moment where you were like, there's something here for me and I'm in? You know exactly the moment. It was the money. It was you saying, here's the price. Here's what it's going to cost. And me saying, I don't have it. It's ridiculous to even consider it because... I'm about to go through this divorce. I'm paying for a lawyer. I'm trying to remortgage a home. I'm going to have to do this by myself. I was still at that time looking for a full-time job so that I could, you know, create a life where I could support my children. Like, it was all absolutely crazy. <laughs> and I said yes for me with the money. Like, that was the energetic that brought me into that space. So say more about that. So, because I think a lot of people can relate to that if they see – work that they know would help them or they, um, you know, they see an opportunity that they would like to have, but then they use the money to disqualify themselves. So what was it that had you shift into from here's all of these really good reasons not to spend money on a uh, course and also then saying, but I'm going to. Because it was for me. It was the first time it was, um, it was big money in my eyes, right? It was big money and it was 100% about nothing else but me. Like we had been spending a lot of money on couples counseling, on, um, you know, apartments and homes and, you know, just trying to navigate that crazy space of do we stay, do we separate, do we divorce? What does it look like? It was such an expensive time and so much of it felt like it was being invested into saving the relationship or stabilizing the family um, and that moment of saying yes it was um, 
I believe in me, the woman who's inside of me, enough that I'm going to put some money to create space. So there is time in my schedule. There is a commitment to the work. There is uh, an accountability that, you know, I knew you weren't going to let me dodge it. So, <laughs> and my friends weren't going to let me dodge it. And that really was what I needed to have happen to um, begin the shift. Yeah. You know, I was reading the energy as you were saying that to just see if I could see if there's a deeper cut than maybe what you were even present to in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there was a moment where the pain of what you were experiencing was uh, greater than the fear of what you were stepping into. Agreed. And yeah, it almost looks like you coming up out of the water. Uh, what came to me is that quote by Alice Siebold, you save yourself or you remain unsaved, right? Yeah. And it feels like that was the moment that your soul was like, this is for me because I, I'm not taking this anymore. You know, like I have to save myself. Yeah. Yeah. And if I could add something to that, you know, everybody has, um, everybody has their own story. There's your own way of looking at the patterns and the story and the pain in your life. And it's unique to everybody. So, um, you know, you can read books on people who are ill, people who have, you know, abuse, who have bad relationships, who um, lose a child. I mean, there's there's so many ways that pain can show up in your life. And what I have learned is um, you can't judge any of the way that shows up. You know, my pain was my pain. And, um, you know, to some it might sound like, well, it's just a relationship ending and a divorce, and that's what it is. But for me, that was that was such a driver in um, change your life, like stop playing the game, step into who you're supposed to be and, and be present, get into this life in this time right now and do what needs to be done. Um, so that's how it's, it played out for me, uh, for other people, you know, it's, it's their journey, their path, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, um, is it okay if I just ask you a couple more questions? It feels like we're in a good flow here. <laughs> of course, but then it's my turn. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. So the next question I have is, so I want to just present. So when you stepped into the work, you were uh, a regular woman working in corporate America with a rocky marriage and two kids, right? Like just like every normal woman who listens to the show. Um, could you read energy when you stepped into this work? No. Had you done very much self-improvement work? You know, it's funny. I love to read. Um, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. My work then was read every self-help book I could get and then journal about all of it. You know, I didn't go to workshops. I didn't, um, sign up for, you know, telecourses or, um, packages or programs, it was more, um, someone's written a book and I know there's words in there that are going to help or save me or fix me. And so I have a library of really powerful, cool books <laughs> and I have tons of journals of all the notes that I took, but I didn't know, uh, how to shift it for me, uh, because the patterns kept playing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. So I want to just um, presence that for everyone who may think that Viv must have some super magical powers to, you know, be here, do what she does. But nope, she started just like everybody else. And she just um, applied herself over years, right? It was years of excavating and finding the story and then doing the integration work and then um, taking the next step to learn to read energy and then practicing learning, reading energy and then putting yourself out there and falling on her face, reading energy, right? Like all of this, all of those things happened. Um, yes. Yes. So uh, let's see. I feel like let's. Uh, all right. I'm going to ask one last question. Then I'm going to turn to you. Okay. Okay. What's one thing that you would be shy to share about yourself or your journey? but would be willing to share anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what would I be shy? You know, here's something I would probably normally not say um, because it sounds boastful and that's not how I mean it, but um, I'm really able to read energy and channel and see. Like, um, I doubted that for so long. And then when I first started learning to do it, I was like, oh, it sometimes works. I'm sometimes good at it. 
Um, and it's just recently that I've really been able to say, um, because I show up in service, because I show up um, from my heart and clear and ready to see whatever is there without an agenda, like it flows. And um, yeah, it feels a little vulnerable to say that to you. Like I do feel like it's something that I'm supposed to be doing that um, it's, it's natural to me. That's the right way to say it. It's not that I'm good at it because it's not me that's doing it, but it's a very natural process for me. Mm-hmm. I was hoping you would say that. I was hoping that's the thing you would share because, um, by the way, Viv is completely modest. She rocks at reading energy, all right? And also, so do my other students. Uh, They all came in just like Viv, like regular women, couldn't see energy. They learned to do it. They practiced it. And now they're really good at it. Um, But Viv is amazing at it. She really, really, really is. Um, And so I'm glad that she's claiming her genius here in front of God and everyone. (laughs) Oh, it's not everyone. It's just you and I. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. No one's listening to this at all. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. I'm willing to cede the floor to you. <laughs> I was ready for that. Okay. So, you know, I have more than three questions. Like, I have a bunch of questions. And I was really trying to decide, do I want to ask you, you know, business stuff? Like, is that what would be most interesting? And it really isn't. I mean, I love your business. I love what we do. But what I want to know is um, some of the creation of you. So my first question is, when did you know? Like, when did you know you were psychic? How did it show up for you the very first time that kind of threw you off or took you back? Hmm. Cool. All right. So let me see. Um, Gosh, it's such an evolution. So for me, I came into it very much from uh, the power space, right? Very much of a head space where... um, so doing the core event work, one of the first pieces was I actually was just coaching friends of mine who worked with me in one of my old companies. And I was just helping them with various things that were coming up, like problems at work or with their husbands. And I actually have a master's degree in social work. So I was a therapist in the past. So that's not even what the company was. It wasn't, about, it wasn't a coaching company per se. It wasn't um, doing that work, but I was just doing that kind of as a friend with them. And in the process, um, what would happen is we would, I would start to notice these patterns. And so I was noticing the patterns and then we would go back into like, when else did that happen? And, and it turned out we would happen upon some event that usually was around the age of five or six. And when that occurred, there would be this huge, uh, what I now know is an energy whoosh in my system. I didn't know energy at all at the time, so I didn't know what it was. But it looked like my hair standing on end, I'd be sweating, um, goosebumps, and they would feel it on the other end of the phone. Uh, And then after that moment, it would be like their life would flash before our eyes. All of a sudden, we'd be like, oh my gosh, that's why you do that thing and that other thing and that thing you did before. Like All of that is in that uh, moment we just discovered. And then after we get off the phone, there'd be this backlash where I'd feel like I was going to throw up and I'd be sick to my stomach. And, um, and so I uh, was like, okay, I need to figure out what this is so that I can see, um, is this safe to do? Is there an easier way to do it on my system? And, um, and I was a little scared of it, you know? And so they also were um, beautifully encouraging me, like there is something mystical about that process. You need to keep doing it and figure out what that is. So that was like the beginning of the exploration and the beginning of me stepping into energy work. Um, And I just dabbled, you know, I started learning about um, Reiki and I started exploring, you know, how energy works and how you can manipulate it and work with it. Um, But I didn't... In fact, I was so scared of the word psychic, I didn't even use that for the first nine years that I did this. Um, I didn't think that what I did was psychic. I was maybe kind of interested in intuition, and I had a sense that I was pretty intuitive, but I couldn't like call on it when I wanted to. And, um, and so I just kept putting one foot in front of the other, and as I expanded into my learning and played with what was happening, 
um, this process evolved. And then I eventually did get formal training in um, energy reading. And, um, and then from there, just did exactly what Viv did. I just kept applying it to myself and clearing my stuff and stepping more into my power. And um, so it's, it's so funny because now that I'm owning it, I can look back on my life and see a lot of psychic things that um, I experienced and that I did throughout my life, but I never would have classified it as that. And um, so, yeah, so uh, what I love about teaching people to read energy is so many common experiences are people start to learn it and then they say, oh my gosh, I've been doing something like that, you know, for years or, oh, I've had that experience before. I didn't know that was reading energy. Um, so yeah, everybody has, has a piece of it. But for me, it was really, uh, there were moments of amazingness and certainly moments as I was learning to read energy where I was like, you know, holy shit, this really works. You know, like I really <laughs> saw something and it was like real. Um, and, and, you know, they continue to amaze me. Like there's certainly room for more expansion and more miracles. So how does it look to you? Like not from your head, but when you're reading energy, what is it? Describe it for me so that I can see how you see it. Mm. Okay. So gosh, I'm looking for the easy answers, but the answer for me is nothing is straightforward. Um, so when I see energy, it looks not at all like you would imagine. So when you hear me speaking, you imagine that I'm seeing some 3D movie that's in technicolor and, you know, it's all like complete. Mm -hmm. in, in reality, it looks more like, um, you know, when you look out a window and then you close your eyes and you sort of see like the negative, like yeah. the heat signature piece, it looks kind of like that. And it is even less defined than that. Like it's very floaty and it's, I always joke, I say it's kind of more like playing charades with whoever, whatever is showing the pictures, you know, it's like, um, I see it and then I'm interpreting like, okay, that looks like a pile. Is it a pile of dirt? I think it's a pile of dirt. Right. And then I'm just like talking and I don't even know what I'm saying, but, um, you know, the picture will morph and change into different things. So it's kind of crazy sounding. Um, like when you just read me, describe that one. Okay, let's see. So seeing is one is only one of the ways that I get information, um, but it is a really great way. So that's how that's kind of the entry point of where I teach people to read energy. But there's also um, Claire audience where you can hear things, and then there's clairvoyance where you know things, um, and then there's also um, clairsentience, which is feeling things. So uh, my main um, power. Uh, the way that my abilities work is to feel. So like when I'm speaking to someone or reading their energy, it's like I can sort of hop into their space and I feel what they're feeling. I can feel where the block is. I can feel what's happening in their body right then. And um, as I feel that, then a knowing happens. So then there's calling it a download of information is not exactly accurate because when I used to hear people say that I was like oh I want to download and I would imagine like plugging <laughs> into a computer and like this information is coming and it's like reading a book but it's not that it's like instantaneously just having the information so when you were talking um I was I hopped into the feeling space of where you were on that call and then I saw you being underwater and like rising up out of the water to take a breath. Mm -hmm. And then there was a knowing of like, ah, she was saving herself. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. For me, there's also sometimes like a word. Uh, it's almost like I can see the word written or the word is just, uh, it's, it's saying so loudly in my head that I can't ignore it. Mm, yes. And it's like, there's just this, like, I can't move around that word to see what is happening <laughs> or mm -hmm. tune into the person. There's just this, uh, like, billboard almost of the word. And until I say that word, I can't move past. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. And actually, um, reading energy is just like learning anything else. So you know how some of us are kinesthetic learners or we're auditory learners or visual learners. So we have strengths or way that information processes through us. Mm -hmm. um, energy reading is the same. 
So, you know, I have friends who do see 3D Technicolor, everything in detail. Um, and I have other friends who, you know, see and feel things other ways. And so really what the training is about is connecting you to what your way of doing it is and then freeing up the voice so that what you're seeing can actually come through in some kind of information that makes sense to someone else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Yeah. That's cool. That's a good question. It's Thank funny. It's, I wonder when I say it, does that, does that sound like that could be replicatable because it's so weird sounding? <laughs> and it's yet... It's hard to learn, right? Yeah, it's not hard. Most people, I mean, in your experience, right? So in our um, energy training, uh, class number one of energy school, <laughs> did you see something? <laughs> You know what's so funny? You feel like you're making it up. Yeah. Um, and even when I'm working with a client, they'll say that. It just feels like I'm making it up. And how how do I know this? You know, it must just be a story I heard somewhere else. But um, yeah, let me add this if I may. It, it To me, um, the way I describe it is um, it feels like truth. You know, you can't you can't debate or argue when something is just true. And if it shows up in the energy and you ask the question of yourself, you know, and I'll have a client or a friend do that, you know, ask yourself in this moment, do I know that this word or this example or this illustration or this pattern is true for me? And you know that it's your, your whole system, your body just can feel that that is truth. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, um, that's how I like to play with it. You know, we're not... I don't want anyone to create something that isn't real for them or true for them. Um, so that's my filter. Is this true for you? Is this true for me? Um, is what shows up right now, is that truth? And if you can answer yes to that, then you're on the right path and you need to just trust in it. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think, you know, one of my favorite sayings is it's not about whatever it is you're trying to do. It's about who you become on the way to that thing. Mm -hmm. And so learning to read energy is not necessarily about just developing a superpower, although that's really fun, but it's really about who you have to become to be able to read energy. So in order to be able to do it, you have to learn trust and surrender. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to get yourself out of the way. You have to get rid of some ego. Um, yeah. You have to be willing to be a conduit and be in service um, and so really, I mean, and those are all skills that serve you in so many ways. So for me, what I find in, in reading energy is it's uh, largely about, if, if you listen to the show last week, you know, the piece where I was um, talking with Christine at the end about her purpose, right? So when I um, got the download of, oh, her purpose is singing, and it's something about singing to babies, there's still the ego voice that says, oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Really? Like, we don't know if that's true. What if we say that? And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That would be embarrassing. Right? So that kind of happens in the background. And then in the foreground, it's like, I'm in service of what's wanting to be said. So I'm going to put it out there and trust that there's a purpose. Right? And then it turns out to be the miracle that she's been already hearing and knowing and she needed it said and now she's off and running. Right? Yeah. So that's really the space of miracles we get to play in, isn't it? It's definitely about um, showing up without an agenda, which, you know, for you and I with the templates that we are, the paths that we follow, like that is scary to not know how things are going to go because my life has always been very rigid and planned and, you know, I can tell you what I'm doing on what weekend with who <laughs> <laughs> and what I have to do before then and after then. And so that's really been a shift for me to say, um, there's a bigger magic at play than what I know. There's, um, you know, such support from God, from source, whatever word you'd like to use, you know, that supports all of us. And so you can just sort of let go and not have to control all of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And let's talk about when we don't do that well, right? So mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. And Come on. <laughs> Surely Viv and I show up in flow and grace all times. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Good thing our kids aren't around or our partners to say, what? Yeah, exactly. 
Like I said, yeah. our eyes were all good. It's everyone around us who reflects that we're not, right? Totally, totally. Which, by the way, is one of the things that I think is imperative in new paradigm um, business operations and life operations is you have to get some women on your wisdom board, right? Like women who see you, who can see you, who are a stand for you, who won't buy your bullshit, um, <laughs> who yeah. will love you when you drop into ego and gently pull you from that, right? And so, um, so let's talk about what is it like to navigate I know you said you didn't want to talk about business, but I, I think it, it serves here because we are creating a new paradigm business. So we don't just do coaching for people, you know, in energy space, and then we run a regular business. Like we actually navigate our business from the space of energy, um, which is a completely new way of doing it. Because when we talk about not showing up an agenda and trusting and surrendering, um, you know, there are these interesting questions like how do you then create a business plan? How do you actually implement it when the energy is shifting every day? <laughs> oh, I would love to discuss that. <laughs> yes, let's discuss that, Viv. So what – and remember, Viv came from a very male-dominated corporate America job, right, into this space. Um, so Viv, what's it like to work here? <laughs> Oh, you crack me up. <laughs> yeah, so here's the funny thing, right? As I look back, like, it's easy to see with hindsight and perspective. But my career has always been um, in male-dominated spaces, right? My very first real job was in a tuxedo company where um, I measured men and, you know, put together weddings and took care of making sure the men look good. <laughs> <laughs> Even as I say that, I crack myself up. Um it was very much about fluffing up the mail and taking the back seat, um, you know, with measures of, you know, how much money are you bringing in? Um, you know, are we meeting the metrics for the store? And how does your store fit into the whole plan of the district? And are we all keeping up? And is there enough profit coming in, you know, for the owners to be able to do what they need to do? And from there, um, I just hit this wall of, you know, I don't want to be in the business world anymore. So I'm going to step out and go into a nonprofit world. And I took a position raising funds for this amazing group of women, but we were serving um, children and teachers and really trying to teach them conflict management skills. And I could only do it to a certain point. You know, at the time I was just having my first child and trying to raise a baby and doing it part time. And so I could sort of ease into that space, but it didn't feel like I could really settle into that space. So I had to go back into the corporate <laughs> male-dominated world that felt so much more familiar. And it was a construction firm, an amazing construction firm with amazing people and some really brilliant, good men. Um, but it, again, was about metrics and fitting in the box and making sure that everything is done according to plan and that the plan meets the three-month goal, the six-month goal, and the five-year goal. <laughs> so. Um, it was very rigid for me and the way that I flow. And so um, I remember our first business meeting. <laughs> um, you know, I had dressed for work when I was at the construction company. I mean, you, you have to look the part, right? And uh, so I was always dressed. And you and I had set up this meeting, and we were going to do it on Skype. And I was so excited because I could show up literally, like, without having my hair done in my pajamas if I wanted to. Like, it was going to be so cool. That was what excited me the most about the meeting. And then we started looking at what needed to be offered. How were we going to roll out the next program? What sort of coaching did we want to set up? And you started reading the energy on every single decision. And literally, like, for a few of those first readings, I was, I was going, what are we doing? <laughs> Like, is this how we're going to make a decision? Because it sure doesn't feel like there's much of a plan. And um, we're changing the plan. Like, we have it, and then we read the energy, and we're switching to something new. And this is absolutely crazy. Um, and we did that, I think, for three or four hours on that first call. And at the end of that call, um, I remember saying to Brad, my partner, I just said, I can't believe this is how I get to work. Like, this is so much more natural to me. Um, you know, looking and trusting what is present, what is truth versus sticking to what everybody tells you you have to do and when you have to meet it by and how much you have to bring on return and investment and, you know, the cost that you're bringing to the business that they have to carry you with. It was um, so much more fun. It's hard at times. I mean, the 
non sunshiny part of it, it's hard because um, you think that you have a plan and then the plan changes because we reevaluate or we, you know, feel into what's going on and suddenly we're shifting direction and so we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants that way. But it's also just exhilarating. Mm. How do you feel about it? It's beautiful. Yeah, I appreciate you um, <clears throat> sharing the, the sunshiny and the non-sunshiny. Uh, and I will say um, I couldn't do it any other way now. Um, you know, I, it is my go-to and it took me a while to integrate energy into my life in that way. But now, I I mean, I don't really make any decisions where I'm not feeling into the energy or discerning in some way other than my brain. Um, and at the same time, there is, um, there really isn't a manual for this, you know, like I don't know anyone else who's creating their business in this way, truly. And, um, I was just in breakdown yesterday and was beautifully held by some, um, sisters on a wisdom council that, you know, where I went and said, like, here are these three projects I am trying to get done. And I feel like I need to get out in the world and I'm mired in the details of them. And it also doesn't feel true. But I, if I keep staying in the formless, you know, the formless form, right? Am I ever going to do anything? Like, will I launch a class? Will I, you know, how do I actually? <laughs> I've asked that before. <laughs> how these things play together, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's not without its um, peril. And also there's the inquiry, right? There's letting go of all of the old paradigm stuff that measuring how many people follow you or um, how much money you make or how many classes you launch. Like that's a thing, you know, is um, it's sort of like how we live our lives by the clock or by time or by how much money we make. Like that's all old paradigm measurement. You know, that's all really illusion. And so it's scary when you start letting go of all of that illusion and then kind of flailing around and like what's real then? You know, what's real? So one thing we know is real is this work is miraculous. The seeing in the truth is real. And then how that fits into the world is always the inquiry, you know. Um, but what we know is that when we offer things, they are in alignment and they are from a space of truth and clarity. And then if they become not so, well, as soon as we're aware of it, we bring them back into that alignment or we change course. You know, so I would definitely say, um, you know, we don't want to package this as like, oh, learn to read energy and your problems are all solved. And also um, it's time. It's time because this is how we're going to step out of all of the old paradigm crap, you know, that's being fed and all of this um, striving that's happening for no reason. You know, like, oh, get a six figure business, get a seven figure, a beer, a, a seven figure launch and you know, follow the blue blueprint and your problems are over. You know, like all of that is crap. And so it's really about, okay, how do we get to truth and meaning and transparency? And, um, and then where does that leave us? Yeah. And I guess what I would add to that is, um, you know, what I have found is I can create a life that flows better for me from this space. You know, um, I work from home now which I love because I can be around my children more when they're at my house. Um, I can set the schedule so that it works for both you and I, so that we're sharing and supporting. Um, there's just a, it's just a more natural way to be than the old rigid business structure that I used to know. And um, it's not that reading energy created that, it's just a tool that supports it for me. You know, it allows mm -hmm. me to check in. Does this feel good? Does this serve? Is this the highest good for my children if I make this choice? Um, yeah, it's a tool. Yeah. I'm not going to overpower it. It's just a tool like any other, but it is serving me powerfully. Mm -hmm. And I like who I am. I like the fact that I'm happier for the most part. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure my mm -hmm. kids would argue sometimes, but overall, um, I'm much more present with them. You know, my son said that to me, I don't know, maybe... A month ago, I was rushing through the bedtime routine because I wanted to uh, get on a call with a friend of mine. We try talk once a week, and I was trying to get done so that I could get to her call, which is California time, you know, bedtime. 
And he says to me, um, you know, I know that this is better because you still gave me 10 minutes before you rushed off. You know, he said before when you were working downtown, like I maybe would get a minute because you were really busy and you had more work to do. And there was just this piece of, oh, thank God I'm making this choice. Thank God I'm here with him, seeing him versus the old way of trying to juggle and make everybody happy and in the process not serving anyone, Mm -hmm. including myself. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I say that to you all the time. Like, I love this life. I love the work. (laughs) I love the magic making. It's so good. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So um, keeping an eye on the time, I have uh, two questions for you that you might be able to answer sort of quickly. Okay. Okay. So the first one is, what's the worst thing about working for and with a psychic medicine woman? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so the funny thing is you always get when something's bothering me, but what I've learned is I don't have to give you the power for it. So you'll know when I'm pissed or when something has really triggered me, and you'll usually send a sweet little text or send a little email like, you know, I'm here for you if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> And usually I am either ready to process by the time you say it, or I'll send you back something that says, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'll let you know when I'm ready. (laughs) Uh, But the fun part is you can't dodge it. Like there's always a radar that you're running on um, what's going on and how are things. And it's fun. It's nice to be seen that way and to um, not dodge it. I'm glad for the accountability. Mm, Nice. Nice. So, and um, just to clarify for those of you who may also read energy um, or use energy in your business, we do have um, agreements around that. So I don't, um, I don't necessarily like read her energy on purpose or I don't try to pry in her space, but I, you know, I just am tuned into it. So there's that. Um, (laughs) And, and what I would just say is, um, so the longer we work together and um, the more honed her skills are getting, she just called me on it this morning. Like, Hey, how was yesterday? We didn't talk at all yesterday. Um, and she said, Hey, how was yesterday? I was feeling some stuff going on in your space, <laughs> <laughs> right? Which there was. So, um, yeah, so that's a beautiful thing. Cause once your ego gets out of like, ah, I just wanted to have my stuff. You can really just show up and, um, it's, it's like built in transparency and accountability. So you don't get to stew in your stuff and hold on to it. You just get to present what's there and then clear. So that's actually a foundation of our work together is, um, let's say we had scheduled to do uh, a call to plan, um, our telesummit that's coming up in the fall. And then we show up and there's some static in the energy. Like one of us has a block showing up. We don't proceed with the meeting until we clear the block because it's pointless So we actually, energy clearing for ourselves is really the main tenet of the work that we do. And then when we're clear, we do some things out in the world, right? Which is essence. That is essence work. That's why Viv's saying she loves her life and she shows up more easily and full because she's in essence so much more of the time. Would you say that, Viv? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And usually there's a match. You know, that's the fun part. Like something will show up for you. And then when we get into the meeting space, there's a match for me. Mm-hmm. And we can both clear it at the same time. So it's like a two for one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes Beautiful. painful, but it always moves. So that's good. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever really been stuck in any one space that we haven't been able to clear it that that's, I can think of. That's because we're good, man. <laughs> We get to the bottom of things. <laughs> Good thing it's just you and I on this call. <laughs> There's a lot of pat packing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we rock. Hey, buddy. All right. You had one more question, and I have one for you. I do. Do you want to ask yours first? Um, no, go ahead. Okay. It's a short one. Yeah. Okay. So feel free to really be as, um, as uh, honest as you want to be here. So right. what's it like to coach me? Hmm. Um, you know, it's funny. A year ago, I would have said it's scary, like scary as hell, actually, is what I would say. Um, because I felt like you were doing it better. And so I couldn't possibly be equal to what you needed. Um, now I don't have that. Now I definitely feel like uh, if I show up, I know what I see is my truth. What's coming through is what needs to be there. So I'm very comfortable letting that come through and um, sharing it with you. And it may not be all you need. You may need to get support somewhere else or you may need to do some work on your own. What's cool for coaching you on my side is you're so fast. 
like you, and I've said this to you many times, like you can drop in, see what's there and be so present really fast. So it's fun. It's a, uh, it's much more playful for me, even though we're looking at stuff that's hurtful or deep, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more in play because you go right there. And if I'm trying to uh, save you or make it not hurt as much because my heart hurts because you're, you're in pain, you are very clear at holding your space of it's showing up for a reason. So obviously I need to clear something here. So don't save me. Let me do my work. Give me a minute and see if you can notice something else. So it's a fun, it's much more fun for me now than it was a year ago. And it's also, I think, um, doing more shifting for you now than it used to. Mm. Nice. Nice. That's good. Thanks. Perfect. All right. The floor is yours. What would you like to ask me <laughs> before we wrap up? I would like to know if you want to introduce us to Medicine Woman. Oh my gosh. No, you did not. <laughs> you said anything's open. I did say that. Oh my gosh. Why do I give her permission for these things? <laughs> not from your head. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you haven't been tuning in, what Viv is inviting me to is um, what I talked about in the very first show. So I have a past life as a medicine woman from Wounded Knee, and she's very much an alive part of me that, um, that I've been learning to make friends with. So I haven't been super graceful always in letting her speak or have her voice. And recently, she, I've been playing more with that. So um, yes, would medicine woman like to speak? Okay. All right. Well, let me just see. Let's see if she will. I am so nervous doing this. Okay. Get out of your head, right? All right. Let's see. Hmm. She says, listen. Unclear if she's talking to me or you. <laughs> or you all. <laughs> she says, all of you. <laughs> all of you. Okay. Do you have a question for Medicine Woman, Viv? No, you have it. I I'm have not a question. You. For You're her. doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wants to talk more about power. This is what she's been talking about lately. So uh, let's just see what she wants to say about power today. Mm, okay, she says there's, there is no power. There's only you, right? So it's not about being in your power or not in your power. It's about being the fullness of who you are. That's it, and that's everything. <laughs> yeah. She makes me cry. I weep when she, <laughs> I weep when she comes forward because she's um, so wise, and she's also uh, she carries a lot of grief because of what she experienced. So when she comes forward, uh, grief has been a piece that I don't love to be with. And also, I just, um, gosh, I just uh, heard a poem yesterday that was so gorgeous and true um, about grief and how it informs us. And um, so I am called to share that, actually. Um, so I think that might be a beautiful way to wrap us up here. Mm. Um, Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you for going there. Yeah, thank you for asking. A medicine woman's giving you a wink. <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like, we're going to tag team this girl and get her to let me out. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Uh, okay. I love you. Close us up for the poem. Yeah, I love you too. Okay. Oh, um, I do have one other thing before I read the poem. So, so one piece that I wanted to tell you all about, if you are interested... Um, Viv is actually, um, open to receive you if you would like to begin your path. 
And um, she actually is offering some personally facilitated soul medicine path journeys where she will um, take you through actually understanding what your path is for this lifetime, what your archetype is, how it works, how it's affecting your life. Um, she'll give you some energy tools. She'll teach them to you and do them with you so that you can start to unravel the core energetics of your path. So if you're interested in that, you can just email her directly, viv at jodyengland.com. And, um, and I can, cause I can feel some of you that are like, okay, how do I get from here to there? That's you put one foot on the path. That's it. Um, and so we'll put the details about that in the follow-up email and um, on the website as well. But viv at jodyengland.com if you're ready to put your feet on the path. Okay, so the poem that I am called to share, um, just to presence it. So, you know, so much of my work and my path has been about power and reclaiming power and right use of power. And what Medicine Woman has been teaching me lately is it's not about power. She's giving the same message to me she just gave to all of all of us, which is it's really about um, presence and fullness. And so um, this poem is called Kindness, and it's by Naomi Shiab Nye. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand what you counted and carefully saved. All this must go, so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. <sighs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the path with us. Until next time. Bye, everyone. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake. A revelation for God's sake. An inspiration for God's sake. Illumination for God's sake. For God's sake. For God's sake, for God.